Uh, Diane, I, I am curious about your thoughts about this sort of fire hose of commentary that we've gotten out of Fed members, kind of starting last week and carrying over into this week, and whether you've gotten any more clarity as to where you think the Fed might go next. Well, I think they're clearly ready to move again if they need to. They want to see at least a half percent. They've made it clear that that's how much they think the additional tightening in the pipeline from recent financial market stress is worse. And if they don't get that additional tightening, they'll go another half percent on the Fed funds rate, which means two more rate hikes. I think they're going to pause no matter what in June. And we do get to better comparables on the inflation numbers for a few months. But I think they're really going to get worried about it if they don't see additional tightening in the pipeline pipeline from the banking sector, more meaningful tightening and slowing of the U.S. economy as we get into the summer months. We're about 14, 15 months into this, Diane, uh, the freight tightening cycle, I should say. I am curious, do we need, does the U.S. need a recession to get that inflation level down to the Fed's target? Well, I think the reality is that we've never not had a recession to get an actual inflation down to where we need it to be. Um, the other kinds of soft landings that people refer to is 1994, but that was the Fed preempting a nascent inflation. And in fact, they were wrong and did a U-turn very quickly in 1995 to cut rates to not allow a train wreck to happen as inflation was decelerating with globalization and productivity growth. So I think it's very difficult to thread the needle that the Fed would like to, that we can get, you know, sort of a softish landing. They're really getting interesting with their semantics. My view is if you're going to get to 4.6 percent minimum on the unemployment rate, which is, you know, what they're talking about over the next year now, they're stretching it out. I think it will go into 2024 before they hit that on their own official forecast in June. But technically, that's enough to be declared a recession. Uh, I am curious. We talk a lot here about, I guess, the quote unquote real economy, Diane. And I was looking uh, at the latest uh, survey of household uh, economics uh, and decision uh, makers that came out a little bit earlier uh, today. The idea here that wages, at least according to folks in the survey, are holding up, but spending patterns aren't necessarily and not necessarily are the confidence among a lot of these folks in economic conditions. Exactly. We're seeing a loss of confidence. That said, they have been spending. I think it's really interesting to look at, though, how we've seen the spending play out. In the first quarter, we saw the strongest month in January and then declines on an inflation-adjusted basis, which I think we're going to see yet again when we come into the data for April. The April's retail sales were weaker than expected, and when we see the inflation data with the services data, we could see very close to flat again in April in terms of real economic consumer spending. So consumers are feeling somewhat cautious. We have seen the saving rate go up, but we're still seeing, of course, the backlog of bookings, particularly abroad in terms of travel. That's more luxury travel and higher income households carrying the U.S. economy, and that can only be done for so long. It has been. And I am curious, when you listen to the commentary, like, you know, go back to the last uh, Fed uh, press conference and Jay Powell was specifically asked about that kind of differential and versus goods and services and how long it can last. I mean, he acknowledged, obviously, that, you know, everything comes to an end. But he also seemed to be somewhat optimistic here that we would not see sort of this fall off a cliff in consumer spending in a way that we did in past cycles. I think, and I think that's the right way to think about it. Unfortunately, I guess I have a little darker interpretation on my metaphors, and that is that the credit tightening we're seeing out there is kind of like a boa constrictor slowly squeezing the economy. And that's very important to remember because, one, there's lags in the system with regard to the rate hikes we've already had and the credit tightening we have in the bank and in the pipeline, I think will hit hardest small businesses, which have been the backbone of job openings and job gains. We hit a peak of 70.9% of all job openings of all time hit in January of this year, and it's since come off that peak. In our own surveys of C-suite individuals, what's interesting is 82% now expect a recession. Large firms were more confident on a recession than smaller firms, although smaller firms' differential was not that much. It was still into the high 70s. We also saw credit tightening. Large firms didn't feel there had been as much mm -hmm. as small and mid-sized firms worried about their down the pike, and that is exactly where we think the next shoe to drop is. 